Very busy uh, southern yellow jacket nest uh, featured in uh, one of my videos, uh, One Tree, Two Hornet Nest. I filmed that back on the 31st of August. Temperatures are in the low 30s right now. It's November 9th. I'm going to attempt to dig it up. I don't have a suit or anything. Um, these workers, um, they're still alive, but it's so cold that they, they're basically frozen cold-blooded so they just kind of freeze up so I'll see what I can find under there if there's anything could be a big one sluggish workers in there I'm flying around I'm buzzing around a little bit it could sting me if I touch it but that's the top of the nest and then it goes down so I'm trying to get it from the trying to dig out the top of the the grass there this is where the entrance was, right here. It kind of went about almost a foot in and about five or six inches under. That one's uh, alarmed, but... There's a few more, so... I don't have my gloves with me. and I, Like I said, I still could get stung. So I'm just trying to be careful. It's like a drainage ditch over here, but they didn't mow. It was like a kind of an embankment, like, like an area there that they did mow, but then it's like a fence here off this building. A walking path there, so I couldn't dug couldn't dig this thing up uh, when it's you know, height of uh, the summer, even early fall, because there's people that run, walk their dogs, and walk on this path, so. But uh, it's about 10 a.m. on Saturday, November 9th. And just, uh, this might be the last nest I can get. The, I did check up on other nests, but um, it seemed like they were gone. It was a Macula finds nest and a shrub that I got, but it fell apart, unfortunately. So, see what, see what's what with this one. Try to be careful with this, get it out as intact as I can. Put it in this little tray here. Yeah, they... I don't know how many combs, I'm curious to see, but... See another worker there looking... Looking out at me. The species goes until the end. Very aggressive, nasty. But, uh, it's cool enough, so I think I'm safe. Just don't want to get stung on the hands. I do have some gardening gloves. I might put those on, but I lose control. You lose so much control wearing gloves. It's like very fine, delicate work here. So, getting this out in one, try to get it out in one piece. All right, see you soon. There's the nest, the cavity, it's a good, uh, I'd say at least uh, 15, 20 workers left. Beating their wings, that's how they warm themselves up. If only they could get a piece of me, but haha, ha, it's too cold. The cold is to my advantage. This is probably, this is my fist for comparison, so. It's probably about the size of a basketball, which is a big, bigger than average um, nest for the species up north. This is around the upper limits that they can attain here in Pennsylvania. It's, it's bigger than even the, the average Macula Franz nest. It's all workers, don't see any males or queens. And then they would, these would all just die off um, within the coming, uh, I'd say by next week, I'd say seven to 10 days. They, Everything would be abandoned, but then it would just be mush. You can see there's a bunch of, uh, in the cavity, it was at least 15 to 20 workers in the, on the nest itself. You can see there's uh, some more. If I can get, get the phone to see what I'm seeing. But uh, yeah, it's a good one. This is the only other nest. Uh, there was some Mikula Franz nest I found, but the leaf litter was covering up. They were in the woods or behind retaining walls, so I couldn't get to them, but this was. Uh, an accessible nest. Luckily I was able to find it.
relatively intact. There was a small uh, queen comb that came off the very bottom one that was small, but still was able to get it. The moisture just kind of damaged it at the bottom, a little moist, a little wet in the rain, but it drained pretty good. Everything drained kind of down, so the nest was kind of elevated. Like they were going in, as I was saying, like where the shovel was. Actually, I thought I saw something flying around, I got nervous there. Um, where the shovel was, this is about where the entrance was, and then they went in, and then it was kind of elevated. The nest started like around here. I think it was attached actually to, um, there's like this netting for like the landscaping or whatever, and that's where the nest was attached to, and then kind of built down into this cavity. So kind of interesting. Nest paper. I still wouldn't recommend do, trying this, even with this, because they still can uh, sting if they did get onto my fingers. So, yeah. This is probably hard to say. I'd say well over a thousand in this nest. Get better pictures once I get out of this little embankment I'm in. But, yep, enjoy. Yep, stinging me on the finger. It's cold, but it's still getting me. I'm actually gonna try to get a picture of this paper here. But uh, yeah, there it is. Like newspaper. I don't really feel it. It's chilly. It did penetrate the skin, but it almost feels like a mosquito bite. But yeah, I got my gloves, my gardening gloves there. Just wanted to kind of pull out the paper that was lying in the cavity. Some more here. So, yeah, this is what I'm dealing with here right now this morning. As you can see, there were two workers to return to the nest while I was digging this up. I was able to hit with the shovel. So my fist for comparison is the nest. Something else you gotta watch out for. See the centipede here. It's actually on the top of the nest cavity. They can uh, never been bit by one, but I heard they can be pretty nasty. Scolopendra, I'm not sure what the species is. If there's any centipede fans out there, let me know. See, again, the nest was attached to this uh, netting, webbing, whatever, initially, and then they built down into this, excavated this area. And they also have drainage, like these little holes here. Um, so if it rains, they, it's kind of like, just their, their natural drainage. So the cavity doesn't flood. If you're wondering, I do <clears throat> fill it in uh, as best I can when I'm done. So, Alright, if you're interested, like I said, again, check out the um, One Tree Two Hornet Nest and you'll see this nest when it was active. This nest has nine levels. Got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I got six, uh, queen cell, or six worker comb levels, and then uh, 
three queen combs. Not sure one of them might be mixed, but looks like they've got six full worker combs and three queen combs. And males are reared usually in the, the queen cells, unlike the bold faced hornet. This species has uh, multiple uh, worker combs, um, whereas the bold faced hornet only has, and the duo only has uh, one worker comb. So this can obtain much greater size. Seems like everything's pretty much uh, asleep, but. It's here looking. Be a long video, but we all enjoy it. If I'd have brought this with me last week, I could have gotten the Macula Franz nest out in better shape. I just kind of half assed the one last week. This is the most aggressive species, I think, when it comes to a yellow jacket. And uh, I think they're in a class of their own. Um, they're not in the Rufa group, um, which is like Vidua, Consabrina, and Ruf, um, Rufa itself. Um, they have multiple worker combs like the Vulgaris group, but they're not quite like Vulgaris. It's the species in the California yellow jacket that are in their own group. And if you're wondering, um, my hand is fine kind of, it did penetrate the skin, but I don't think it really injected any venom, luckily. Still kind of a stupid move for me not wearing those gloves, but I wanted to get the nest out in as best shape as I could.